The first curveball, which I've already warned you about, is even though our initial instinct for several years has been to rationalize a denominator, I'm going to make this denominator a bit of a disaster, but that's okay, I can deal with it. Okay? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply through by the square root of x plus 1. Square root of x plus 1. So here's how it's going to look. You're going to get this on the numerator, and then you're going to get this on the denominator. So far, so good. Try not to skip anything here. Okay? Now, the whole reason for this is because now my numerator is going to be rational, and my denominator is going to be the square root of a quadratic. Now, even though that's messier than what I had before, um, I can deal with it. What do we got here? They, it adds to 8, and it multiplies to 7. That's my pair, my 1 and my 7. Okay? And this, of course, either with respect to x. Now, when you have a look at this, right? Oh, yes, question. Uh, yeah, I did mistakenly write a minus 7. I meant to write it as a plus. Sorry about that. Okay? So I've got this. Okay, yes, it is. Sorry. Now, sorry, sorry, you've already gone through. And now, I should point out, that's, that's my bad, that's on me. Um, I should point out, of course, it's not going to be materially different. You're just going to get slightly messier coefficients. Sorry, yeah. Well, in, in my defense, it's still kind of horrible anyway, so maybe it's not going to turn out that much of an advantage. This is important, though. Have a look at this next moment, right? When you have a look at this, there's a non-obvious thing to do. Certainly when I first learned this, I was like, why do they do that, right? Have a look, eyes up for a second, at my numerator. Now, I'm about to break it apart. I'm about to break apart this numerator, but I'm going to do it in a way that when I first do it, you'll say, why would you do it that way? Here's how I'm going to break up the numerator. I'm going to break up the numerator into x plus 4. Yeah, that's fine. And Morgan, Morgan approves. Well, thank goodness Morgan approves. Everything is fine, right? And I'm also going to put in uh, minus 3. OK, now. Uh, yeah. So some of you are looking at this and saying, yes, of course, of course. And the rest of you are like, what the di like, where did that come from? Like, maybe an x and a 1, maybe? Um, why, why this awkward way of doing it? Now, you need to think. You need to think about where you're headed. You need to think about where you're going, right? If you have a look at this denominator, this quadratic denominator, right? If you look carefully at it, maybe some of you will recognize this is going to be related to using reverse chain rule, right? Reverse chain rule, because you've got a quadratic here, and then you've got a linear one up here. So if there's going to be some reverse chain rule, and if this is f, if I call this f, then I would like f dash to appear somewhere. I would like f dash to appear somewhere. If this is f, what's f dash? 2x plus 8. Maybe you want to jot this down as a note for yourself, right? If f dash of this f is 2x plus 8, then if I can get something that looks like 2x plus 8 in here, in this case, it's just off by a constant coefficient, then that's really good. That's really good for me, right? This is going to walk right into my reverse chain rule, OK? Over here, what am I going to need to do? I'm going to have to deal with it quite separately, actually. This is not an f dash on f situation. What's going to go on? Yeah, this is, if you have a look at that, well, I've gotten rid of it. Your fifth row down, right? This thing here, I want to complete the square. So I'm going to have to deal with these quite separately. Let's have a go to see how far I get in three minutes. So to make it more obvious, I'm going to pull out a factor of a half to get my 2x plus 8, which I actually want. And then just to make it, just to have a few less things going on in my brain, I'm going to write this in index form. What is the appropriate index? Negative a half, thank you. So that is with respect to x. Can you see I've set it up for reverse chain rule, right? OK, looking over here, like a whole separate question almost, right? I've got my 3 up the top. And then here to complete the square, to get the right constant here, yeah, I'm going to halve and square. Half and square. So in this case, that's a 4 squared is 16. So I get x squared plus 8x plus 16. There's my square. Minus 9, because what I actually have is that 7 over there. So far, so good? Uh, with respect to x. OK, are we ready to do this bit? Yeah. You reckon? Yeah? OK, here we go. So this half is separate to the integration. Okay. Here's my f dash. I've divided, I have to divide by f dash in the reverse 
chain rule. I've also got to increase the power by 1. So that leaves me with x squared plus 8x plus 7. I've increased by 1 to the power of a half. And then what's the last step in reverse chain rule? Times 2. It is times by 2, but for me, I'd prefer to, because I always do this, right? I divide by whatever my power was, right? So I'm dividing by a half, OK? And of course, you can see what's about to happen there. That looks good. All right, over here, I'm not quite happy. I'm, I would like to do one more step before I actually perform the integration, because I'm just skeptical of my own brain. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that 3 there. What do we get? So I've got the square root of x plus 4 squared minus 9, which is, um, is it advantageous to me to write that as 3 squared? Yeah. I don't think it, well, this is a log, isn't it? This is a log. It's not really going to matter as much, okay? So let's see here. My halves are gone, so I get this. Whoopsie daisy. I've actually been a bit cheeky because I have broken apart these lines, so really this should be a constant here because I've only integrated one and not the other. Uh, now let's deal with this. Okay, so what's going to happen to this 3? Hang out the front. We can finish it, right? And then? Help me out. Log of? Log of x squared root x squared. As your value? Square root x squared plus x plus 7. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to bother. Hold on. <laughs> Here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, there you go. All right. So. Now, now, just as you finish writing that and then pack up, um, you can see part of the challenge of this question, um, and I did this to myself sort of running out of time, right, um, is just how, how broad this question becomes. This question becomes like four questions worth of an advanced student's integration, right, just out of that one single uh, look. I mean, it, it started off, look, he looks so harmless, right? And then it's like, ah, you became this, right? So be methodical, be careful. You can see this one's not quite finished. I need another line there, but 